Okay, so in our video series of neurology lectures, in this video, we are going to talk about Huntington disease. We are going to discuss the presentation, the diagnosis and management of Huntington disease in detail. First of all, what is Huntington disease? Huntington disease is a neurodegenerative movement disorder which is characterized by involuntary and irregular movement of limbs, neck and face that is called as chorea. So, irregular involuntary movement of limb, neck and face occurs due to a neurodegenerative disorder that is called as chorea, dance-like movements. Now, how does Huntington disease occur? Huntington disease is basically a genetic disorder. It is transmitted in families. Usually, there is a family history in which the patient's family members are also affected. There will be a family history of movement disorder. And remember, it is an autosomal dominant disorder. In autosomal dominant disorder, if one parent is affected, there is 50% chance that the child will also be affected. Because if even if one gene is transmitted from the parent, that one gene can cause disease. So there is 50% chance of the child being affected if the parent is affected from Huntington disease. And basically what happens in Huntington disease, the abnormality is that there are trinucleotide repeats. Some abnormal repeats are present in the gene, Huntington gene. CAG trinucleotide repeat is present in the gene and that abnormal repeated gene causes formation of proteins that destroy the caudate, the basal ganglia, the basal ganglia which control movements of the body, which synchronizes all the movements, which organizes, orchestrates all the movements of the body, that basal ganglia is damaged by the products of these trinucleotide repeats. So that is the pathology behind Huntington's disease. It damages the basal ganglia. It causes atrophy of caudate, which is a part of basal ganglia that coordinates all the movement. And when caudate is damaged, there is decreased GABA. The decreased GABA, GABA is basically an inhibitory hormone. It is an inhibitory chemical that inhibits abnormal movement. So when the inhibitory chemical is low, there will be involuntary, unsynchronized, and uncoordinated movement that is not controlled by the patient because the controlling chemical is deficient in the patient that is Huntington chorea. It usually occurs around the age of 40 years and it leads to death within 15 to 20 years of onset. Now we'll discuss the clinical presentation. You will easily understand that what are the complications associated with it and what can cause death in these patients. And remember an important genetic concept in Huntington disease that is called as genetic anticipation. What is anticipation? Anticipation is basically that if a parent is affected from Huntington disease, that that parent uh, uh, transmits that gene to the son. And that son is affected from the disease, but that son will be affected from the disease earlier than the father. And when the son transmits the uh, defected gene to his son or daughter, that son and daughter will be even affected earlier, even more earlier from the father. So, there is increase in the uh, CA gene trinucleotide repeat size. The gene, the abnormal gene increases in size in the generations. So, the coming generation will be having more effect of the disease, more earlier disease, more severe disease. That is called as anticipation. Within the generations, the disease intensity increases. It presents more earlier in the coming generations. That is called as anticipation. Now coming to the presentation of Huntington disease. Presentation the early and initial finding would be chorea. The patient will give you a history that the, uh, initially what I felt was that I was dropping things. I could not hold thing and I was dropping thing and it was uncontrolled. I did not want to drop the thing but it happened. And then that patient starts to develop irregular movement. Now, these chorea is irregular, sudden, non-repetitive, arrhythmic movement. That's why it's called the dance-like movement. It is uncontrolled. Patient cannot control it. It is sudden. All of a sudden, patient will move his hand like this. And the patient will move the other hand like this. And head, neck, and the body will also be moving. So, it is an irregular, uh, uncontrolled, involuntary movement disorder. That is called as chorea. I'll show you a brief video of that as well. What is acetosis? There will be acetosis. Acetosis is a rhythm involuntary movement of hand and fingers. This is how rhythm movement looks like. These patients will be having involuntary rhythm movement of the hand. That is called as acetosis. 
So these patients will be having rhythmic movement of the hand, atheosis with the abnormal movement, abnormal non-repetitive movement of the body that is called as chorea, dance-like movement. It also affects the eyes. In the eyes, you will see nystagmus. These patients will be having vibrations in their eyes that is called as nystagmus, saccades, abnormal movement of the eye, hyperreflexia. There will be increased reflexes urinary incontinence it also affects the autonomic nervous system this is a patient the video by youtube and lightus in this video this patient is having abnormal movement abnormal movement of hands abnormal movement of the arm and these movements are all uncontrolled movement abnormal movement of the neck body and legs you can appreciate the abnormal movements now initially these patients are having increased abnormal movements and chorea but later on as the disease progresses their movement starts to slow down and they develop rigidity dystonia abnormal tone in the hand their tone of the hand will be more their tone of the body will be more their hands will be rigid there will be bradykinesia slowed movement initially there is irregular abnormal movement but later on their body starts to develop hypokinetic motor symptoms slowness slowness of the movement and later on in the end stages patient can also develop akinetic mutism in which there is inability to move these patients akinetic patient will be just lying down on their chair and they will not be moving at all they would not be speaking and there will be motor impersistence motor impersistence is an important sign in these patients motor impersistence means that if you ask these patient to hold hand like this and if that patient is having abnormal movement of the hand and you ask them to hold their hand like this they won't be able to hold it there for long you ask them to protrude their tongue and they'll protrude their tongue and you ask them to keep it protruded for a long time they they will hardly protrude it for 2 3 seconds and they'll retract it back they will try their best to keep the tongue protruded but they will again and again retract it and that's an involuntary abnormal movement so they cannot persist or maintain a certain position if you ask them to hold a hand like this they will contract the hand and they their hand will return to the previous position they cannot maintain a certain position that is called as motor impersistence inability to sustain a simple voluntary act and with the abnormal movement disorder chorea and atheosis these patients also have cognitive decline cognitive decline is a major part that need to be treated in these patients and the big problem in these patients these patients are mostly suffering from major depressive disorder these are usually young patients and these young patients develop such abnormal movements the disease in itself is so depressing that such young patients at the peak of their life they get such debilitating diseases and the disease causes depression but there is also associated pathological depression in these patients so there is major depressive disorder with the suicidal tendencies one of the common causes of death in these patients is also suicide dementia schizophrenia like psychosis hallucinations basically what happens is now let me explain the pathophysiology when dopamine is decreased in these patients when dopamine is decreased excitatory hormones are active those excitatory chemicals are active what are the excitatory chemicals dopamine is considered to be one of the important agents in causing the chorea and abnormal movement now there is a balance in the body that there is inhibitory hormone inhibitory chemicals and excitatory chemicals now if the inhibitory chemical is low gaba is low the excitatory chemicals will be high so the excitatory chemical is dopamine and we studied in parkinsons that when dopamine is high it causes motor dyskinesia and when dopamine is low it causes bradykinesia so dopamine is high and that high dopamine causes motor abnormal movements and dopamine excess also causes hallucinations remember as we studied in parkinsons this is when we gave dopamine when we gave levodopa to the patient we said that patient is at high risk of developing hallucinations so naturally in these body in their bodies all the side effects of levodopa are basically huntington disease motor dyskinesias hallucinations excess dopamine excess dopamine causes these schizophrenia psychosis abnormal movement and these patients are aggressive usually you will see that the uh, family member usually the wife would tell you that my husband used to be very calm 
nice guy but now he gets angry without any reason he is so aggressive he gets so much angry that we cannot control him and he was never like this before the change in behavior there is aggression anxiety apathy cachexia due to abnormal movement continuously their muscles are getting contracted and there is high metabolic rate in the body that causes loss of the body weight and cachexia diagnosis coming to the diagnosis in the diagnosis it's basically a clinical diagnosis but since it runs in the families usually genetic testing and genetic counseling is done in these patients in genetic testing what you do is that you 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 look at the you do pcr and you detect the cag trinucleotide repeats and you detect those the uh, trinucleotide repeats and if one family member is affected usually other family members are also tested for these condition imaging is rarely done but imaging is done to rule out many other pathologies as well ct mri ct mri is done and in ct and mri what you would see is that you would see atrophy of basal ganglia part especially atrophy of caudate caudate atrophy is the classical feature of huntington disease in caudate atrophy caudate is usually present at this part near the ventricle so what you will see is when caudate atrophies the ventricles will get enlarged now if you search a normal coronal section of mri you would see that ventricles are like this over here the ventricles have enlarged they have enlarged due to atrophy of caudate that is present over here coming to the management and treatment of huntington disease the management of huntington disease involve many aspects you have to treat the depression in patient you have to treat the agitation aggression and psychosis in these patients you have to take care of the chorea you have to treat the chorea you have to protect the patient from the injuries so it's a multidisciplinary approach in these patients first of all coming to the management of chorea which is irregular dance like movement abnormal involuntary movement the non pharmacological intervention that you can do is the use of helmet in these patients so that they do not hit their head because they have high risk that they will injure themselves you use padded reclining chairs because if they hit their elbows in abnormal involuntary movement they will fracture their arm they will injure themselves you use low bed so even if they by any abnormal movement if they fall from the bed the bed should not be at a lower height protective padding of the environment and you minimize stress in these patients remember stress is a very important part in these patients because if there is increased stress in these patients it accelerates huntington disease in the prognostic factor we will see that those patients who are stressed out about many things these patients are at high risk of having accelerated disease now if the chorea interferes with the function of a person then you the next thing you have to see that is there comorbid depression or not because the medication that we are going to use few of these medications actually worsen the depression the few medications that are used for the treatment of chorea they worsen the depression so most of these patients as we said they have major depressive disorder, disorder with suicidal ideation so if you are giving the medication that cause that worsen the depression you cannot do that so if there is a uh, comorbid depression in these patients you have to use second generation antipsychotic drugs like eriprazole olanzapine risperidone to control the chorea abnormal movement basically these antipsychotics block the dopamine receptors so as i said that there is a balance dopamine causes excessive movement since the inhibitory gaba is low and dopamine is high dopamine causes excessive movement abnormal movement and we are blocking the dopamine with these antipsychotics that block the dopamine receptors and if the patient is having chorea but that patient is not suffering from depression in such patients you can use vmat2 inhibitors which are which is vesicular monoamine transporter 2 inhibitor these monoamine transporter inhibitors have the same mechanism they block the dopamine they reduce the dopamine levels and therefore control the abnormal movements but the vm82 inhibitor have a side effect that they increase the suicidal tendencies in the patient so we do not give it in the patients that are suffering from depression we give it in the patients that are not suffering from depression tetrabenazine dutetrabenazine they are used for the treatment of chorea in huntington disease coming to psychosis and agitation as i said there will be mood changes there will be aggression in, in these patient anxiety in these patient 
For that, you can use atypical antipsychotics like Qtypine 12.5 mg daily at the bedtime because it causes sleep, it induces sleep, and you can increase the dose, titrate the dose up to 25 mg. These patients are suffering from depression, these patients are suffering from anxiety. You have to screen these patients for suicidal thoughts because as I said, one of the common cause of death in these patients is suicide. You use SSRIs like citalopram to treat depression in these patients. Coming to the prognosis of Huntington disease, as I said, it is a progressive disease. It worsens with time and if, if patient is stressed out about anything, stress can accelerate, it can speed up the disease process mean duration is 10 to 20 years after the symptom onset and the life expectancy after the disease is usually up to 20 years and most common cause of death in these patients is respiratory problem these abnormal movement these abnormal muscle movement also affect the throat and respiratory system and that abnormal movement can cause abnormal gag reflex and these patients cannot protect their airways there can be an increased risk of aspiration so these respiratory problems are the most common cause of death in these patients. Before going into the summary, if you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button. We talked about Huntington disease. It is a neurodegenerative disease that causes chorea. It is an autosomal disease in which there is CAG trinucleotide repeat and atrophy of quadratus scene. Anticipation phenomena in which the coming generations will be more affected from the disease. Earlier, they are, they are affected earlier than the previous generation. And uh, we've talked about chorea, acetosis, nystagmus, urinary incontinence, advanced symptoms are akinetic mutism, hypokinetic motor symptoms, cognitive problems including major depressive disorders, how do you diagnose it, the management of chorea uh, with uh, management of chorea with drugs, psychosis and agitation of management, depression and anxiety management with SSRIs, the prognosis of Huntington disease. So if you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on neurology lectures. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.